Hi, I'm Liz, and if you've seen my channel trailer, I mentioned that I created a world building tree. A tree? I don't think so. If I had to wager, this is going to be another one of your terrifying charts. There's probably something I didn't think to cover, but I hope this will give you some good ideas on how to flesh out your world. And now you're ignoring so me. So without any further ado... I would like to announce that I've repented of my ways and burned that horrible tree to the ground? Here it is. Well, it's magical flamethrower time. No! Please. I worked hard on it. Fine. Make your case. But when I come back, I'm going to have a bigger magical flamethrower. Bigger. <sighs> Keep in mind, this thing is not like a hard and fast rule. This is just a tool to help you. A brainstorming springboard, if you will. So, at the top, I've got the entire world, the whole planet. If you have more than one planet in your story, you would have to fill out one graph for each planet. There are two aspects of your world, non-living aspects and living aspects. First, you have the physical aspects of your world, your landscape. What does your world look like? What is its terrain? What kind of biomes does it have? Sometimes, people make a planet all one biome which isn't particularly realistic, at least if you want your planets to house life. Think about elevation differences, such as mountains and canyons. Also, usually traditional life-sustaining planets would have water. Does your world have oceans, lakes, and rivers? Also think about the role... <laughs> also think about the poles of your planet, which will generally be much colder than your equator. The other physical aspects you have to think about is landmarks, like country boundaries, but also natural landmarks, like rock formations and forests. A big thing that is helpful to add lots of, especially if you're basing your world directly off Earth, is intelligent life-contributed landmarks. These are things that intelligent beings contributed to or made, like cities, or the Eiffel Tower, or statues of fallen heroes. If you give your world many of these physical aspects and details, it will feel much more real to the audience. The other side of non-living aspects are forces of nature. As you can see, I have magic as one of the forces of nature. Again, not all of you will have magic, not all of this tree will apply to you. This is just to give you ideas. I put magic dot 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 because magic is complicated. That's basically a whole other video. If you'd like to see a video about this, just comment below. And if I've already made it by the time you watch, it should be coming on the screen just about now. Anyway, the other force of nature is, of course, the weather, which I've split into three categories. Beautiful, neutral, and destructive. Sometimes, writers fall into the trap of only thinking about one of these aspects, like how hostile a planet is or how beautiful it is. But in reality, you need all of these aspects to make a complete world. Within each category, you could have destructive abnormal weather or beautiful normal weather. And these could be natural, like a sunset, or be made by intelligent life, like smog. The dot 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 off the end of neutral and destructive, and some other places in the diagram, just mean that you need to cover the same roots as the beautiful one has. The abnormal, normal, natural, etc. I just didn't want to clutter up the diagram. That's all the non-living aspects I can think of. So now, I'm going to touch on the living aspects. Obviously, you got beings and plants. Plants are pretty self-explan-ex- I always mess that word up. Okay, plants are pretty self-explanatory. And it's similar to the weather. You've got useful ones, neutral, dangerous, and beautiful. Useful plants could be for medicine or food. Neutral could just be something like grass. Dangerous plants don't necessarily have to be piranha plants but could be something like poison ivy or poisonous mushrooms. And of course, we all know what beautiful plants are. Now things begin to get a little hairy when we move on to beings. First, we have non-intelligent life. Things like wildlife, beasts of burden, and pets. When you think about wildlife, think about it in terms of an ecosystem. You need predators and prey. Also, think about game. What kind of animals are hunted? which are valuable or practical. Are some going extinct because of this? 
Also, think about animal migrations, as this is a typical thing. You might think of birds, but there are so many other animals that migrate that could affect daily lives. This is also related to gaming seasons. For beasts of burden, you must think about wildlife that has been domesticated, farm animals that give meat, or transportation animals like ostrich horses. And finally, the last of the non-intelligent life, pets. What kind of animals are common pets, like goldfish or dogs? What are more exotic pets that people of upper classes might have in your story? Like, I don't know, tigers, alligators, or just well-bred dogs? That's the last of the non-intelligent life. And now, it starts to get really complicated. Intelligent life. I don't want to overwhelm you, so this is where I'm going to stop for now. I put the entire chart in the description though, so feel free to look at it. As you can see, what I covered was just a third of the chart. I'll be doing another video on intelligent life, so be looking out for a part two! No! You can't just do that! You have to ask for audience interaction! It can't be that big of a deal. Liz will release a part two when she gets 50, no, a hundred likes on this video! Do I get a say? If you like this video, subscribe to see more content and click the bell icon to be notified immediately when that part two comes out. See you soon!